Hello everybody. It's been a while. It's uh, been probably about a month and a half. So my last video was on Lars and uh, I admitted that I had Lars. So we've been working on the aquarium since trying to get it back up. And uh, in this week's video, um, due to some necessity of that Lars, uh, we're going to be talking about corals. So sit back, relax, and welcome to another edition of Snore and Reef. Um, this video is a little bit of a necessity, um, and that's for a couple different reasons. As you guys remember, in my last video I talked about having Lars not having time for the aquarium and some of the things that happened as a result, and so did my son, the man behind the camera. So uh, he had a small nano reef tank in his aquarium, and um, he's doing basketball, and he's doing school, and just didn't have time to upkeep an aquarium. We've all been there, so he decided to tear it down. And when he tore it down, I took everything, my quarantine tank was empty, and I took all of his corals and put them in my quarantine tank. Now, they've been in there about a month, and uh, I'd like to use my quarantine tank for some other things, so it's time to go ahead and pick the corals that I want to keep, pick the corals I don't want to keep, and um, put them into the tank. So that's the first reason that Lars is resulting into a coral video. The second reason is, um, we're gonna do some trick photography here. So as you can see over here, where my, um, my Monty is, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the Monty looked like hopefully a couple months ago. And now I'm going to show you what the Monty looks like now. So one of the reasons that my tank has been so successful is I have plenty of water flow. And as you can see, the Monty has started to close off an entire section. So we're going to have to trim some of that Monty out. So I'm going to show you um, how I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like after. A couple other things that you have is, as you can see right here, we have two uh, Acro SPS corals that are both doing very, very well, and as a result, they like to grow into each other. So we are going to trim some of the branches off, and we're going to make some frags. And uh, hopefully, we'll, you know, I'll have some frags that are about six weeks old, so you can see what a six-week-old frag of that looks like, and then we'll do the new frags. Um, we're also going to be, of course, placing some of the coral from the quarantine tank in as I've picked them out here. And we have all sorts of different corals that we're going to be adding. So we'll talk a little bit about coral placement and go from there. So um, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean up some of the stuff here. Now, everything is going to be just, it's your choice. It's what you think looks good. And if you mess up, it's okay. It's going to grow back. So we're going to trim out this bottom area here. Okay, probably even trim some of this off here. Allow this acro to grow up a little bit more, kind of like how it is here. Um, and we'll leave this higher table kind of the way it is we're going to trim back here a little bit between the two corals trim here between the two corals give it some just additional water flow so how we do that is we're going to come in here I've got a little pair of bone cutters and I'm going to try to hold on to it with the bone cutters as I clip so it doesn't kind of fall down into the tank. If it does fall down, I'll have to grab it. So, Okay, got the little first piece off here. So 
So there you can see it's basically been bleached out because it's been fighting with that other coral and it's just a skeleton. So I'm not going to worry about trying to keep it or frag it. We'll just pull it out of the tank. So this is a really nice piece that I can go ahead and put on a frag plug, let it grow out a little bit, and probably trade in. So for it right now, I'm just going to probably sit it right here on top of this rock. So we're starting to get what I want. Probably still trim a little bit of this out. Oh, looks like I already clipped something out here. Smaller frag. This was the size of the frag on this thing when I first got it. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. Again, too small to do anything with. All right, so I'm going to keep trimming here, keep trimming here, but this should give you an idea of kind of the process. I won't bore you with the details, but we'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. So here with the Monty, what we're trying to do is we're going to try to open up this area here. Now, nothing I can do is going to make it look natural until it grows out a little bit more. The clownfish aren't real happy with me being around here right now but that's okay. So I'm going to just try to take a little bit of this out. I'm going to try to save this little shelf right here and just knock out this area here to get the water flow that I originally intended back. So again, there's really no good way of doing this with the angle because I can't come in where I'd like to. So I'm going to knock this stuff back. It's probably going to fall and then I'm going to have to go back and get it. That's a big enough hole where I can start to cut. Now, as you can see, it's attached to this rock here, and it's about to attach to this rock here. So I think I'm going to try to trim this back. I don't know that I necessarily want it to attach to this rock but it might have already done so. Here, I'm probably going to let it leave that little bridge. I kind of like that. So, again here. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of creating a slime to protect itself. That's okay. Um, we'll use a net to try to get as much of that out of the water as we can. Okay, so we've kind of opened that up again. Okay, I'm going to keep working on this a little bit, but you can see the general idea. 
if you can look right here, you can see that that coral is basically just dead. Um, if I leave it like that, the polyps will probably come back, or I can choose to cut it. So I'll let you guys know how that ends. But as you can see, we've created a nice hole now again, where fish can go to escape and just give a little bit more um, water flow within the tank. So, as you can see, we've opened up this hole quite a bit and the fish have already started swimming through here and it's going to allow water flow from the uh, power head right over here. Here's where all the coral rubble is up here. We're going to get to that here in just a second. So I also have some coral rubble here I need to get. Here you can see that we've cleared out this. That's going to allow this coral to grow up without getting stung by this coral. We've added some more space here between these two corals. And over here, we have, over here we've opened this area up because this coral was about ready to grow into this rock. So that's the fragging that we've done today. And now I'm going to show you how I make my frags. So when you're making frags, the first thing you need are frag plugs. So I've got plenty of frag plugs, but if you are running low, just ask your local um, uh, urchin if they have any. And this guy looks like he has one. He's going to let me borrow it. Can I borrow my uh, frag plug, buddy? Thank you so much. All right. All right, everybody. So this is how I make my frag plugs. Everybody's going to do things a little bit different. Um, I use these krill clear acrylic frag plugs. This one's been in the tank for a while. But one of the reasons why I use these is they're fairly easy to separate when people take them. So the first thing I do is I take some of this epoxy and I cut off enough to cover the head of the frag plug. So this epoxy you have to kind of mash together to activate it, like all epoxies of course. Now another reason I do this is that as you can see here, it allows the encrusting to take place in a more natural way so that as you put it in the tank, it looks more natural and you don't have that clear distinction of an obvious frag plug. So getting back to this, I have got it pretty well blended together now. And I basically just take a ball and I put it on top of the frag plug and I just cover the edges enough to where it helps it attach. Okay. So that is, and I basically want to make this look like a natural uh, piece of the rock work. Because what we'll do is we'll either cut it here, or they can literally just separate it between the two, which is what I do. Okay. So we're going to let that sit for a minute. Like that. Okay, now, here's this piece of huge coral that I got out. Now, obviously, a lot of this stuff no one would want in their tank. But this piece up here is fairly nice. So, this stuff here is probably not stuff I want, but maybe even in here is stuff that I do. So, I'm going to take and cut away... That's a piece I want to keep, and maybe hmm. all right. And I could make a couple frog plugs with this, but I think I've already got several frags of this, so I think that's all I'm going to do. So here is how I make my frag plugs. I'm going to take a 
I'm going to create a little impression where this main frag is going to go. And I'm going to pull it out. Inside that impression is where I am going to put my glue. So I put a smidge of the glue right there. make my frag plug like that. Now I always try to make it look as natural as possible so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple small little frags on this thing like this. Alright, so this should be a really nice frag for somebody when it grows out in about six or eight weeks but this is gonna be the frag plug right here this side, I want to make sure I get light so that it starts to encrust again. Obviously, this is the part that was away from the light before, and this side was toward the light. So this is how I make my frag plugs. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the tank. I'm going to keep making plugs, and we'll show you when it's all done. All right, so here you can see all the frags that we've done today. We'll let those guys grow for a month or two, and then we'll trade those in on some new frags. All right, everybody. So I hope you got a lot out of this video, and um, I haven't really talked corals with you guys before, so I hope that you enjoyed it, and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video. Um, helps keep me motivated to keep making them. Thanks again, everybody. Talk to you later.